Well, Mayor Adams is lashing out out of frustration because he sees his entire term in office being consumed by this. Uh, he basically says New York is going to be destroyed if the migrant crisis isn't addressed. So he's lashing out at everyone. Uh, he's criticizing President Biden for not dealing with the problem and sending enough money. But the real beef he has is with Governor Abbott of Texas, whom he calls, quote, a madman, unquote. And uh, is saying that, uh, you know, Texas is basically trying to destroy New York City. Well, there are two problems with that. One is just over 10% of the migrants that have arrived in New York City are from Texas, uh, sent by Governor Abbott. The rest have arrived because New York City has a several decade old uh, law issued by a court, not even a legislature, uh, that says everyone in New York who arrives has a right to shelter a right to sanctuary, and a right to food. So that is bankrupting the city. And there's some questions as to whether or not uh, New York City can approach the court and ask for some kind of relief. Right now, the bill is $12 billion, and that would be enough to bankrupt the city in short order. Well, it's borne by the New York City taxpayers, and obviously the rest of the country isn't directly affected. But remember, New York City is not the only city affected. Uh, these buses are going to Los Angeles uh, from Texas. They're also, of course, you know, Denver, Colorado, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Cities all over the country are being affected by this, even though they're far. Many of them are far from the border. So this is the first time that a lot of progressive politicians have had to experience, uh, shall we say, the consequences of their sanctimonious philosophy, which is, you know, we want to welcome all comers. We're sanctuary city for the the poor and the dispossessed. In the case of New York City, as a taxpayer there, uh, we already pay the highest taxes in the country. Uh, the marginal tax rate for many New Yorkers, even in the middle class, is over 50%. And so this is just another example of why New Yorkers are leaving the country. New York has lost about 2 or 3% of its population since COVID began. And many of them to Florida and Texas and uh, Nevada and Tennessee that don't have an income tax. So... I think this only accelerates the departure of the middle class, which is the base of any major city. And it's it's a transfer of populations. The migrants come in, middle frustrated middle class people leave. Some cities uh, warn that they might suffer a doom loop if this cycle of homeless people arriving and businesses and people leaving. New York City is a little different from that. New York City does have a unique position. The publishing industry, the financial industry, uh, it's a crossroads for the world. Uh, there will always be a New York City. You know, it will always be a business center. But there's a New York City that's on top of the world, and there's a New York City that becomes grimier and less friendly to people, um, more likely to uh, prompt people to leave uh, in the middle of their career, not stay and put down stakes and a real foundation, not raise their families there. Uh, a meaner, uglier, nastier, brutish place, to quote a British philosopher named Thomas Hobbes. What do you make of Biden's plan to sort of the remain in Texas plan, if you like, to sort of try and contain the situation in Texas? Well, he's had three years. How's that working out for you? Not very well. Uh, you know, they, the only relief we've gotten is from the courts that have reined in some of Biden's more extreme interpretations of U.S. law. Uh, the courts, for example, have said, well, you know, you you don't you, you can keep people on the other side of the border if you have the agreement with the Mexican authorities and others. So this is yet another uh, attempt to put a finger in the dike that's leaking of the border. Now, I have enormous sympathy for people uh, in, in the migrant community, uh, they're often they are fleeing persecution. They are fleeing great hardship. A majority of the New York migrants that have arrived are from Venezuela, which is one of the most depressing, chaotic, shambolic places on the planet. Uh, one of the richest countries in Latin America until recently, and now because of the socialist dictatorship there, people are starving. So I understand why people are coming. We have to find accommodation for them, and especially perhaps find ways to dislodge the government of Venezuela in the future. But what we really have, a, have is a crisis of compassion, which is we are treating the symptoms 
not the real underlying problems. 